Do you know what the most abundant protein is? It's collagen. Collagen makes up a lot of your connective tissues, and collagen is actually three basically rods that get twisted into a helix and it's very flexible both literally and figuratively. Depending on where in your body, collagen can have different uses and purposes. There are about 20 different types of collagen and you don't need to know all of them. You only need to know four. There's type one. And type one is found mainly in your bone as well as your dentine, fascia, and seen in wound repair. By far the most important is the fact that it's found in your bone. And there's one, the word one inside of bone. That should help you memorize that type one is associated with bone. Type two, I like to call it car two lidge because it's found in your cartilage. It's also found in your nucleus pulposus. That's that little shock pad that's in your spine. We'll talk about that during our neural block. And your vitreous body of your eye. But by far the most important, cartilage. Three is found in your blood vessels. Blood vessels. Fetal tissue and early granulation tissue. Granulation. Finally, four, found in your basement membrane primarily. Basement membrane. So collagen is made by these cells found in your connective tissue called fibroblasts. Fibroblasts make collagen. Collagen is, a, again, basically three rods turned into a helix. And these rods are made up of proteins and proteins are made up of amino acids. The most important of these amino acids in the protein structure is glycine. You have these repeats of glycine, another amino acid, another amino acid, and then glycine again, and that repeats. So every third spot is glycine. The amino acid in between, it could be lysine, it can be proline, doesn't really matter. But the most important is glycine. So those make up the rods and those rods become a helix and that is your collagen. So the first few steps takes place in the fibroblast itself. It creates mRNA and that gets translated into a protein, a precursor protein of collagen called pre-pro-collagen. And yes, that is a double prefix. Pre-pro-collagen, while still in the fibroblast, gets hydroxylated with the help of vitamin C. That's why if you're vitamin C deficient, you get scurvy, you get bleeding gums because you can't make collagen right. Next step, it gets glycosylated, which is a fancy word of, fancy way of saying putting a sugar on there. And now this protein is able to start combining, to start making those three rods we were talking about. However, you're still in the cell. You don't want it to precipitate in the cell. So we put these terminal proteins on it called terminal pro peptides. Terminal pro peptides. And that makes it soluble. That way it doesn't precipitate in the cell. Now we can export it out of our fibroblast. So these come out into the extracellular space. Peptidase cuts these off, and now they can precipitate and become solid. So they start to look like this, the three rods in a triple helix. Three rods, triple helix. You make a ton of these. An enzyme comes in called lysosyl oxidase with his friend copper. Stacks these. There you have it, collagen. So we started inside the fibroblast, making these rods, and then exporting them, stacking them, making collagen. So what can go wrong? Well, one disorder due to defective collagen synthesis is called Ehrler 
Danlos syndrome. And there's actually a group of disorders. It can be affected by any enzyme. It's not particular to one enzyme or defect, but collagen is not made correctly. And so patients have really stretchy skin, really lax joints. Their blood vessels aren't as tight as they should be, so they can have aneurysms. That is Ehlers Danlos syndrome. Another disorder you can have is osteogenesis imperfecta. Osteogenesis imperfecta. And that has a defect in type 1 collagen. It's associated with mutated collagen genes, abbreviated COLA A1 and A2. And collagen, like we talked about, is important in bones. Do you remember what type? It'd be type 1, wouldn't it? Isn't that a coincidence? That's why they call it osteogenesis imperfecta. You're not making, you're not making bone correctly. And so from birth, they're going to have multiple fractures. It might look just like child abuse, so be careful of that. So multiple fractures. Young patients also can have hearing loss. That's because the ossicles, the bones in the middle ear, aren't made correctly. So hearing loss. They can have blue looking sclera. It's because the collagen in their eye is so thin that you can see the choroidal veins behind it. Blue sclera. And lastly, they can have teeth erosion because of the dentine in their teeth is lacking. So teeth erosion. And that is osteogenesis imperfecta. One last one that's lesser known is called Menkes. Menkes is, I write it up here, Menkes is X-link recessive and it's a defect in copper transport. Remember, you need copper for lysosol oxidase. Remember what lysosol oxidase does? Stacks collagen to make it in the first place. So if you don't have enough copper, then you can't stack that collagen. So there's a defect in copper, defect in copper transport. The exact protein is ATP7A. There's another disease this is actually uh, beyond this topic, but there's another disease where there's a defect in copper transport. Do you know what that is? It's Wilson's. And Wilson's is ATP7B. So memorizing it shouldn't be too hard. You memorize one, you have the other. Anki's causes growth retardation, hypertonia. So growth. retardation and that is it for collagen now that isn't it for our video we have one more protein i want to discuss that is like collagen but is a more elastic that is called elastin elastin is very similar to collagen however it's non-hydroxylated is more elastic that's where it gets its name it's found in places like your lungs your ligaments and being very similar to collagen you pump it out, you stack it. However, elastin has something else that's different. It is bound together by fibrillin. Fibrillin is like a scaffolding. A defect in fibrillin causes Marfan's. That's all I want to talk about today. That does it for connective tissues, collagen, elastin. Hope it made sense. See you next time.